I want to talk about Nakobe Dean, the uh, former player who many thought could have potentially even gone in the first round. In fact, that was the consensus. It would have been a hotter take to say he should go in round two than he should go in round one. Now, again, he was 30th on the consensus big board, so that means that, you know, uh, fringe first rounder. But you see, I mean, the peak on that, uh, some mock draft even had him going as high as number six. Now, I don't know if that many people were doing that, but there were people who absolutely fell in love with Nakobe Dean. I heard some people say, you know, he was some people's linebacker number one in a draft class that ended up having several very good linebackers, several first rounders. Quay Walker, uh, Devin Lloyd were both first rounders. Uh, Leo Chanel had a very good rookie year. Now, it seemed like a big part of why he ended up falling in the first place was because of a couple injuries. He had a pectoral injury and a, a knee injury. The knee injury, obviously very scary, causes him to fall in the draft to some degree, uh, but it wasn't supposed to affect his playing time. However, if you look over at his PFF page, you see that his playing time was few and far between. The TOT, that stands for total snaps, uh, for at least total defensive snaps, because he played about 400 uh, special team snaps. He was a special teamer, but uh, when he came in, he barely played. I mean, you look at a lot of games that he did play in, he only had one snap. That was the majority of the games he played in. He was only getting one snap. Well, okay, actually, no, it isn't. It was five out of the 11. So the majority, he still played more than one snap. So, uh, uh, you know, a slight correction there. But the majority of his games, he played two or less snaps. How about that for you? Uh, you know, only really two games, the Tennessee game and the Giants game, he came in and had significant playing time. I do have to say, though, I went back and watched, uh, you know, when he was in there for those two games. It was kind of garbage time in both of those situations. He looked very good. Like this play, which is a very simple play. People are going to say, oh, this is too simple. Why even bring it up? Well, I like to bring it up. Uh, we'll get into some more, uh, you know, impressive plays in a second. But, you know, his job is to just cover the uh, halfback on this play. It's going to be man coverage. And as you see, he's going to do a good job of just getting over and getting in position. Again, nothing crazy. But this is what I saw him do is pretty consistently, I felt like he was getting himself in position to succeed, which is good to see. He wasn't getting fooled necessarily by the more advanced NFL tactics. Now, again, not necessarily going up against starters either. So it's maybe more preseason type tape than actual NFL season type tape. But he showed us some flashes, I thought. Something like this is a great example where what's supposed to happen is for the Titans is the left guard and left, or excuse me, right guard and right tackle are supposed to double team uh, an interior defensive lineman. One of them gets off that block and gets up to block Dean. But that's not going to work out too well. Watch how that gets clogged up right away. But this is where I think Dean's, uh, you know, good instincts can come into play right here where, okay, there's a window for him to get through, but a lot of players I think would be a little bit more cautious. Dean is a very aggressive player, and when he's playing with a great defensive line, that could be a really dangerous combination. As you see, he rushes in and is able to make a quick tackle. And, you know, again, that's a, you know, a, a highlight real level play, really. So again, not necessarily going up against the, you know, the, the starters here for Tennessee. That's worth mentioning. Had a straight shot to get to the running back, but still, he made the most of a good opportunity, which, hey, when you're playing against starters, you're still going to get some good opportunities, and if you're a good player, you want, you know, you make the most of them, so that's optimistic to see. Now, one thing I also noticed, which this is just going to be some of the growing pains of being a linebacker that he's just going to have to deal with a little bit in year one, which again, I'm assuming he's going to get significant playing time just given the you know the current situation and who they have. I think there's going to be a bit of, he's going to learn when not to be over aggressive, I think. Like this is a good example where you see him, he's already pretty much getting ready to rush in. He you know, wants to make a play, which I do have to say, hey, You've been on the bench all season long. You're finally getting significant playing time for the first time in his career. This was the first game that he got significant playing time. He had three snaps week one, three other games where he had one snap, and now he got 15 snaps in this game. He's trying to make a name for himself, trying to do something, and to some degree, I get it. However, you see him just rush right in, and he just runs into, uh, you know, a wall of players because he wasn't really, you know, reading the play as much as he was just trying to rush in and make a play right away. Maybe he felt like he saw something. Maybe he knew it was going to be a running play and tried to fit through a gap and just screwed it up. Did a good job, I thought, of after the play, still, you know, hustling over to try and get into the play. But just something that, hey, going to have to learn a little bit of, you know, be a bit more patient, I think, at times. Or maybe you just let him be aggressive and take the good with the bad. I don't know. But that's just something that I noticed. Although, again, Big asterisks on it because
because for all we know, he was just trying to make a, a splash play. He felt like if he made a couple of splash plays, then that's how he could, uh, you know, get more playing time, which that's the goal is to try to get more playing time when you're a third round pick. So I don't know exactly what it was, but, uh, you know, just something I noticed. If you look over at his PFF page, this is what he was in college. It's worth noting he doesn't have a ton of great tape under his resume. I do have to mention that linebacker is a position that PFF grades translate somewhat to the NFL. It's not perfect, but it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if you have over a 90 grade, then you tend to have, that tends to be a good thing. Like that's optimistic that you'll be successful at the NFL level. But if you're below 90, then it doesn't really matter if you're, uh, you know, 88 or 78 or 68. That, that kind of doesn't really make a difference there. There's kind of like a cutoff. Uh, not to say you can't be good if you're below 90, just that like, it doesn't really matter that much how much below 90 you are at that point. But anyway, he passed that test of having the above 90 grade, but then in uh, 2020 and in 2019, uh, he was not quite as good. So he really was just a one-year wonder player, but still uh, did a lot of great stuff in coverage and pass rush. Run defense wasn't quite as dominant, but still a very good grade of 81.9. So the analytics uh, for his uh, you know college stuff were very optimistic. So at the end of the day, what would my, my expectations be for someone like N'Kobe Dean? If like, let's say he comes in and he is a legitimate, just like, you know, he's a every down starter for the Philadelphia Eagles, which they very much might try to throw him into right away. For me, I would be, uh, you know, slightly concerned to start. I, I think my guess is he will eventually get it together. I liked him coming out of college. I still like him now. I think he should be a pretty good player. I think the concern I would have uh, with someone like N'Kobe Dean is, is it going to take him some time? And for an Eagles team that's trying to win a Super Bowl right now, like, listen, you want the one seed. If you're in the NFC, you want the one seed. You want to try and, you know, that helps you win the Super Bowl. It was a big part of what allowed them to, you know, really helped them, I thought, get to the Super Bowl last year because they earned the one seed, which meant they got a favorable matchup against the Giants to start. And then, you know, they played the 49ers, who uh, were a very good team. Unfortunately, they had the injuries, but I think that the Eagles were the better team anyway. But really, due to the great work they did during the regular season, they only really had one real test before the Super Bowl, I thought. And you could have a very similar uh, situation if you can get the one seed this year. So you want to make sure that you are you hit the ground running. And if, you know, if someone like Kobe Dean struggles right out of the gate and you're trying to, you know, win a bunch of games... You might have to say, you know what, we don't have time to develop a guy. Let's just put in someone who can be solid. I don't know. It's just a very interesting dilemma uh, because how how quickly is he going to get it is the question. But I do think he will eventually uh, get the hang of things and become a good player. So that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.